like the changing of the seasons and the tides of the sea. But here's the one which driving me berserk. Why do only fools and old sinners work? La 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 la. Hello, everybody. This is Tyler here once again from the Character Workshop. Now, actually, we're in the right hat this time. Forgot to wear this hat in the last episode. I don't know why. But now that I got that out of the way, yes, it's finally here. An episode that I've been looking forward to making ever since I first announced this earlier in June. This is the Dalek 44 Q&A episode. So, sorry that it took a while for this to happen. Uh, I just had to wait for Dalek 44 to give me his responses, but that's fine. So anyways, I'm going to be asking Dalek44 15 questions relating to his YouTube career, pretty much. So, without further ado, the man who doesn't need an introduction, but has got one anyway, Dalek44. Greetings from the UK. And greetings over here from the US. Hopefully you're doing well. Anyways, let's get started. I am going to be reading all these 15 questions from a double-sided double piece of paper I made. First question is, how did you get introduced to YouTube and what made you decide to create a YouTube channel? I first came across the website YouTube while I was in my sit form years and I started checking out some random videos on there like movie trailers, Thomas the Tank Engine fan videos and parody videos using Thomas the Tank Engine clips but audios from other TV shows like say Blackadder, Fireman Sam, Postman Pat, only falls and horses, the list goes on. And it wasn't until some time afterwards that I decided to create my own channels so I'd be able to subscribe and like and comment on some of the videos that I really loved watching. And when I first created the channel it wasn't initially to make videos at the time, it was I didn't really have much of the technology or the ability or the skills to make videos at the time. It was just to, you know, comment on other people's videos and let them know what a great job they've been doing. And when I eventually got my camera and other equipment and all that, I decided to start creating my own videos and that's how my channel came to be. Ah, very neat. Alright, second question. What inspired you to do your second co series? A very interesting thing about second co is that when I originally came up with the idea, it wasn't going to be Second Co originally, it was going to be a show called The Time Friends, which starred the Tenth Doctor, Captain Jack Harkness, and K-9. And they'd be living in this city called Celebrid in a flat that was for some reason owned by the Fat Controller from Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends. And the show was initially meant to be a mixture of the Justice Friends segments from Dexter's Laboratory and Captain Punjab's Thomas Batchman Engine series. So it was basically intended to be a comedy series that was a mixture between those two. came up with Second Co not long after my first episode of Team TTE, I decided that I liked those characters so much that I decided to spin them off into their own show. And when I made the show I got to explore the characters' personalities a lot more than I do in Team TTE because they get more screen time in their own show. Even though they do get a decent amount of screen time in some episodes of TTT, they get even more screen time when it's their own show. And the main inspiration for Second Co in general was, at first it was meant to be like a, a combination of things like a series of clips based on homestarrunner.com but the main inspiration was Ed, Ed and Eddie and Only Fools and Horses, like these three guys trying to make money out of wacky schemes and 
and just try and make a living for themselves. So only Falls and Horses and Ed, Ed and Eddie were really the main inspirations for Second Co. Kind of ironic how what was supposed to be the villains of your original, like, precursor to Second Co. would later become the main characters of Second Co. Pretty funny in my opinion. But anyways, that leads to the next question. What made you decide to have the main characters of Second Co. based on creatures from Doctor Who? For example, Daleks, the Cybermen, Sladeen, etc. The idea to have the main characters be based on Doctor Who creatures all came from when I had my scrapped idea for the Time Friends, where the characters were Doctor Who characters living in this world together. And the Dalek, Cyberman and Slavine came up was because those are three of my favourite Doctor Who villains. So I just decided to use them as the main characters and give them their own personalities that have nothing to do with Doctor Who whatsoever. So, and Sek was sort of a combination of various characters that I loved, like Del Boy from Only Falls and Horses, Blackadder from Blackadder, Eddie from Ed, Ed and Eddie, a little bit of Strong Bad from Home Star Runner, and Cyber's initially the sensible one, he's the Double D slash Rodney of the group, always questioning sex ideas and questioning whether they're going to work or whether they're going to backfire, but he goes along with them anyway because they're good mates and they've known each other a long time. And Slavine is obviously a combination of various idiots that I grew up with and still watch today, like Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie, Aldrich from Blackadder, and Peter Griffin from Family Guy. He's just a combination of many idiots that I've seen in media over the years. I love McDonald's. But I can't eat it because then I'll get fat. But it's so good. Very, very cool. Next question. What inspired you to do some of your other shows, like TTTE and your review series? TTTE came about during Christmas a few years. Year, many years ago, TTTE started as a Christmas pilot, as a series of shorts that was initially the pilot for the show. And I was inspired to do it because I'd watched many other YouTubers do Thomas-related parody shows like Combined Harvester 1's Thomas the Model Engine, Miss Oliver and Blossom's TNF, Train Level 4 Services' Tony Thomas and Friends, and Train Boy 7's old series, to name a few. So it was really all those YouTubers and my love of the original Thomas the Tank Engine that inspired me to do TTTE. And my review series, believe it or not, came from inspiration from The Nostalgia Critic by Doug Walker. Because I've been watching his videos for years and I love a lot of his reviews. I just, I just love how angry he gets at certain films and TV shows that are really bad and praises a lot of the shows that are still decent. And I've noticed on the internet that angry critics seem to be a big thing at the moment. But I didn't really want to do that sort of thing with my review series. I just wanted to give my honest opinions of what I've thought about all these movies and TV shows I've watched over the years. And the only really negative reviews I have given is from Call of Duty Engines and Top Cat the movie because though I remember those being really bad movies. But most of the stuff I do is like really popular the stuff it's like my honest opinions, the goods and the bads of them. Yeah, you know, I just really wanted to get my opinions out on a lot of these things I've watched growing up over the years. And just to spice it up a bit, I decided to do some running gags, like references to other TV shows and movies, and some just some quotes from other films that could hopefully turn into a meme, or have already become a meme on YouTube. So it was the nostalgia critic and my love of film and TV shows, and just a passion for making people laugh. Money. 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 Now with Disney doing all live action remakes based off their animated classics, that that meme at the very end definitely has some relevancy, I will say. And next question, what would you say would be your favorite episode or episodes of Second Co? 
One of my favourite episodes of Sekiko is Date Night, which is based off of the Homestar Runner episode of the same name. And it was an idea I've wanted to do ever since I've watched Trainboy 7's Thomas version of that video, because I watched the original Date Night video and I absolutely loved it, as well as the Thomas version, and I thought, why not just randomly do this with Cyber Second Slovene trying to ruin Thomas and Mosey's date? because Thomas and Rosie were really the only two couples within my universe at the time. And so I just decided to make a video based on that, and it's become one of the most viewed second co episodes over the years. I thought it was a French restaurant! <laughs> oh. Um, sna snails? <laughs> and most of the other episodes I really, really love are pretty much every episode where Unikitty is a part of it. Like her introduction episode, which is now the most viewed second co episode with over 99,000 viewers and still going strong. And yeah, pretty much every episode that stars Unikitty. In. And I also love the Race of the Century episode. That was one of the biggest projects I've ever worked on and it was just such fun to write and come up with these ideas like which characters could be a part of it and I mean Dick Dastardy and Muttley returned since their first appearance in the Jungle special. You know, these were just some of the episodes that I've had the most fun working on it's, and it's really great to rewatch them again. I can't really blame you with the Unikitty themed episodes because that's pretty much how I got introduced to Second Co to begin with, so yeah, I can definitely relate to that. Are there any particular reviews that you would say you're the most satisfied with or you would call your favorite? I'm quite proud with all of the reviews I've done, like for Thomas Semba and my main series of reviews. But I think the ones that I'm proud of the most are the Lego Movie reviews, you know, from the Lego Movie to the Lego Batman Movie to the Lego Ninjago Movie. I think those came out really, really well. And the Lego Movie was one of the few films that I reviewed when it's still in the cinemas. And these days I just wait till they've come out on DVD and Blu-ray before I review them. And another one I'm really happy with how it came out was the Sonic the Hedgehog's cartoons review where I review Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Sat AM and Sonic Underground all in one video. And I was actually inspired to do that because of the Nostalgia Critic's review of Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, where he talks about Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and then ends the video by talking about Sonic Sat AM. And I thought, why not do that with all three cartoons that I grew up with? Because Sonic the Hedgehog was one of my favourite characters from Nostalgia and I was introduced to the character by the TV show, so I felt, why not review all three shows in one? Like, show my love for the character and these shows. Them, along with my Thomas Semba reviews, are the ones I'm really happy with and had the most fun working on. Very nice. What made you decide to dedicate December to reviewing Thomas-related media? The idea to dedicate December to reviewing Thomas-related media all came from Doug Walker's Disney Semba series where every December he reviews Disney content, like movies, TV shows, and director DVD movies and all that. And I chose Thomas the Tank Engine because it was one of my childhood favourites, as you've obviously seen in some of my previous videos. And I thought, why not dedicate December to the show and the franchise and just get my opinions out on the classic series as well as some of the newer stuff, aside from series 13 to 16. And I've gotten some requests asking me what I think of series 13 to 16, but I choose not to review those because while I know they're terrible, everyone has done it. Everyone's just bashed them to death and pointed out everything wrong with those series. So I just focus mainly on each new series and specials that come out and the classic series, a few trivial things about the classic series, and and anything else I could find Thomas related that I grew up with, like video games, toys, and all that stuff. And that's how Thomas Semba came about. 